Oh, oh. So what? What if? Oh wait, you're up. You're no, you're up. I'm up. You're up. It's my lunch date. <laughs> Hi, Jack. Hello, my dear. Well, we are. Is it okay if you're on Facebook Live? Yes. Oh, good, because we are. Okay. So I have a question for you. Yes. What is the next book you're writing? Right now, I'm finishing up a book called Living the Success Principles. It's okay. all stories of people who've either read my book, taken a seminar, and how they've applied the principles and magically changed their lives. From a guy who was a brain injury, thought he'd never get out of bed again. His wife was told, you now have a third child. Mm. Uh, you're going to be taking care of him forever. And I was up in Canada, and I was on TV in the good morning, like 7 in the morning, one of those shows. And the, the announcer said, uh, stay tuned after this message. Jack Canfield is going to show you how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't want to be in bed anymore. He'd been feeling sorry for himself for over a year because someone else basically put him in that situation. Mm -hmm. And he got my book. He couldn't read it. He was reading it to about the third grade level. And so what happened was he got someone else to read it to him. He hired a reading coach, learned to read again, came to one of my seminars. <laughs> And now is one of my trainers traveling around the world. Wow. Another story is a guy who basically got my free 10-day transformation. Free. Just go to my website. Yeah. yeah give it a com, Free. And has made multiple millions of dollars just from going through my free three minutes a day online course. So those are the kind of stories. So that's what I'm finishing. We're doing a chick. We're doing uh, the success principles for women. That'll come out in about a year. Okay. And we're doing success principles workbook. So mm -hmm. people have a workbook to walk through. And my big magnus opus, which I'm just starting to write, is a book on about how to choose love over fear in your life. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You know what? What? What I do is I help women break through their fears. Good. So that they can live a life of confidence. They can you know, generate more revenue and they can live a greater purpose Beautiful. on the earth. Beautiful. So what kind of advice do you have for me? In, Jack ter in terms of what? Like, what's the best way for me to maybe to fast, to fast start that and you know, get that out there sooner, faster? I guess Facebook Live is one way. <laughs> well, one of the things you want to do is read a book called 1001 Ways, 1001 Ways to uh, Market Your Book. Okay. It's by John Kramer, K-R-E-M-E-R. -E uh, there's a ton of stuff in there you do. Uh, when we first got that book years ago, and he updates it every year for all the new mm. technology and things, but we took 700 of those ideas, made 700 post-its, put them on a wall going down to our office, and every day we take two or three off and do them. It took us 14 months to finish all that. Oh, wow. But at the end of that 14 months, our book made number 15 on the Washington Post. Three weeks later, number 15 on the New York Times climbed up, got to number one and stayed there for three years. So most oh, authors wow. give up too soon in the marketing because it's not a bestseller overnight. Okay. So the main thing is make a commitment. And with your work, brand it. I was just asked by a plastic surgeon. I think he's a plastic surgeon. Um, no, he was a guy who works with um, weight loss surgery. And what he was saying is he got a new book coming out and he said, how can I make it as successful as your book? And I said, this is his seventh book. I said, are they all branded with some similar kind of name? He said, no. Mm. I said, so every time you bring a book out, you are competing with yourself. Instead of creating a brand like Chicken Super the Soul, The Success Principles, Men from Mars, Women from Venus, The okay. Mars and Venus Series, that's critical. So. Think about that as you do that as well. Oh, I love that. Okay, Thank and you. lastly, yes. what was your favorite part of our lunch? <laughs> favorite part of, was listening to your story about Thank your you. childhood and growing up and, you know, getting out of an abusive relationship and and very similar to things I went through in my yeah. life. So I felt a, a kinship with you yeah. in terms of our backgrounds. Yeah. Thank you so much. My you pleasure. Oh, you're amazing. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, oh I just hugged. We just hugged on here. Okay, you guys. That is me, Jack so Canfield, I, I with Kent. I have a quick question. Yes, okay. Um, you do a lot on leadership, and you work with a lot of entrepreneurs. If you could yes. give one nugget mm. of information to leaders out there or entrepreneurs on how to be a leader, what would it be? Well, first of all, you have to have something you're passionate about that you can communicate because leaders need to be able to create a vision and excite and empower and inspire people so that they want to follow you to where you're leading. Mm -hmm. You also have to walk the talk. I mean, you don't ask people, you know, this was a really interesting study. They asked people to uh, be on time to meetings in corporations. Who's always the last person to come to the meeting? The leader. Oh, <laughs> so, huh, and sometimes yeah, yeah. 10 or 15 or 20 minutes late. So you have to model what it is. People it is, need yeah. to trust you. You have to keep your word, follow through on what you say you're going to do. Um, you have to 
be someone who is um, continually learning so you can keep up with the trend. In today's world, things are changing so fast. You'll be a follower if you're not a leader. So you've got to keep up and, 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 and stay with all that. I would say also uh, live with integrity because when people start finding out you aren't, you know, being the person you say you are, they lose trust in you. Um, and you have to be someone who holds people accountable, which means you've got to be someone that's a little bit tough sometimes, as well as loving. Celebrate the people's successes, really support them in feeling like they did a good job. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also at the same time, you know, be willing to discipline, not in a punishing way, but hold people accountable. Don't put up with sloppy work. One of the things I learned from uh, Henry Kissinger was when he would have a uh, staff and they would do a report for him, they'd come in and he would say, they said, I've worked all weekend on this. What he would say, say, is that your best work? Is that the best thing you can possibly do? Ooh. And they would go, no. Oh. He'd say, no, go back and spend two more days on it. I want your best work. Super and don't accept anything that's the substandard. Yeah. You know? That's and finally, be a teacher. People want to, they want, they want a leader who can teach them something and they know that they're going to go somewhere in your organization and you're going to mentor them and support them. Now, if you're leading 25,000 people like in Microsoft, that's a different story. But most people are working in small organizations. And then finally, be a good listener. Most leaders don't listen. You know, they, they t here's what we're going to do and here's why we're going to do it. Well, what do you guys think about that? What are your needs? Ask for feedback. Most leaders don't take in feedback very well. They get angry at it. Mm -hmm. they, they argue with it. They don't listen to it. And so basically it's called, you know, what? tell me something I need to know. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate me as a leader? Anything less than a 10, tell me what I would need to do to get a 10. Do that with your spouse. Do that with your children. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate me as a parent? How would you rate me as a husband? How would you rate me as a friend, a sister, a mother, whatever. Mm -hmm. And and then the only answer you ever give when people give you that kind of feedback is thank you for caring enough to be honest with me and share that with me. Don't fight with it, just say thank you. Now, is all feedback accurate? No. But as I like to say, if one person calls you a horse, they're crazy. Five people call you a horse, there's a conspiracy. Ten people call you a horse, it's time to buy a saddle. <laughs> awesome, or, or, or go. You. Ride horseback. I mean, um, bareback. Bareback. There you go. Awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome. Great question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Really appreciate it. Okay. Bye, okay, everyone. Bye.